So when we talked about classifying matter, we talked about homogeneous mixtures, and you can actually refer to homogeneous mixtures as solutions. So essentially, we're talking about homogeneous mixtures. Um, there are some terms that we need to learn in order to talk about them and be able to learn more about them mathematically. So concentration, it's essentially the amount of something within a solution. So um, in terms of how we describe concentration, we can either call something dilute, so it has a low concentration, or it's very concentrated, so it's there's a lot of that within the solution, whatever you're talking about. Now, uh, solutions are made up of a solvent and a solute. The solvent is whatever the solute is dissolved in, and it's usually the one in higher amount. So the solute will be the one that's in lower concentration in comparison to the solvent. So let's say you have a cup of coffee, black coffee, and then you add sugar. Um, the solvent will be the water. You will have actually several solutes. So you'll have, for example, caffeine. You'll have all the components that make it taste like coffee. You'll have the sugar and so on. Um, when you have dilute coffee, it's very weak, right? And not good. When you have very concentrated dark coffee, it's really good. Um, so here you have another example of a concentrated solution versus a dilute. So in a concentrated solution, you will have more of those um, solute particles. Now, I, I also want to talk about why it's important to even understand solutions and concentrations of them. So in your actual life, in your real life, um, you deal with things, these things daily, even if you don't know. So in medications, the, con the concentrations of the active ingredients are very important. They have to be at that concentration. That's what they were tested as. That's how they're marketed as. That's what we know is effective. So if they're not at that concentration, if it's too low, it's not going to work. It's not going to reach all the receptors in your body. For example, if I'm thinking of like pain medicine. It won't reach all the receptors. It won't, it won't take away your pain. If it's too high, that could be that can have bad side effects. Like it could be too too rough, like on your liver. Um, household products, all the cleaning products that you use, they have certain amounts of cleaning agents. If it's too high, it can be dangerous for you to use, and so on. Right? If things are too concentrated or too dilute, it can be it can be like a situation that you don't want for whatever the case may be. And just to give you an example of like a very common thing. So for uh, the alcohol that we drink, it's eth ethyl alcohol. Um, you have different concentrations of it in different types of, of alcohol. So in beer, it's about 5%. In um, malt liquor, it's about 7 so higher. In wine, it's 12 so it's getting higher. And then in any like hard liquor, uh, it's about 40%, so it's very, very strong. Um, and then if you've ever heard the term proof, uh, 80 proof, anything proof is uh, double the percentage. So here you have 40% alcohol, it's 80 proof. So that's why you hear the term 200, you might have heard the, her, the term 200 proof, that's 100% alcohol, so double the percentage. Now the unit that we use to describe concentration is called molarity. And what it is, is the amount of solute in moles divided by the volume of your entire solution in liters. So here you can see we have our amount of solute in moles divided by our volume, and it gives us molarity. So I want you to think about the mole map again and about whether we can add this to the mole map. So we are going to do some problems, uh, some examples on how to calculate amounts of, of reagents or something that we may be uh, trying to dissolve and, and have a solution of a certain concentration. But I want to talk about how you would actually make that in lab. So in an actual lab, let's say you are making a one molar NaCl solution, right? You would have to figure out how much mass is in one mole of NaCl and the way to do that is actually to just take one mole of NaCl 
you use the molar mass and the molar mass is actually, oh sorry, one mole NaCl is actually 58.44 grams NaCl. So that's why they weighed out 58.44 grams. Now they're pouring it into something called a volumetric flask. This volumetric flask is uh, a piece of glass that has a certain line on it. At that line is exactly a certain, certain volume. So they're adding our, our solid in first, right? And then we're adding the water to the line. So we're diluting to the line that we need to um, dilute to. And specifically, it's a one liter. Now they add in and then they mix it. And now it's a one molar solution. So I want you to think about how when we add this volume, um, some of, of the space in this volumetric flask has already been taken by our solid. So this is ensuring very accurate, uh, a very accurate volume compared to if we had just like a beaker and we added our solid and then we took another, let's say another beaker and it had a, lot, a liter of water that you weighed out, that you measured out. If you added that to here, to our NACL, that would be slightly, well, it can be very inaccurate, but that would be less inaccurate compared to this method where you use a volumetric flask. So we can actually use molarity in calculation. So remember I asked you to think about whether we can add molarity to the mold map and we can. So um, we can use it as a conversion factor whichever way we need to. If we need to go from moles to liters then we'll use it this way where the moles are at the bottom to cancel out moles and the other way around where if you're going from liters to moles then we would set it up this way. So essentially here's our finished product. So uh, we had this previously just the mass all the way to the atoms molecules and now we're adding this volume to this uh, mole map and remember the moles are always at the center. So we are going to practice calculating molarity and then using it as a conversion factor. So this first part of this example is telling us we have 0.03 mole of sucrose. What is the molarity if I dissolve it in a cup of coffee with a volume of 350? So sucrose is just table sugar. So again, similar example where we have coffee. So we uh, have some knowns. And we have some unknowns. Now, our knowns are we have 0.03 mole. I'm just going to abbreviate sucrose. And then we have uh, a volume of 350 ml solution, essentially. And we are, our unknown is molarity, right? What is the molarity of this? We know that molarity is mole per liter, mole solute per liter solution. So all we're going to do essentially is plug and chug. So our molarity is 0.03 mole sucrose and actually I forgot one part. We have to convert this 350 ml to liters so let's go ahead and do that. So essentially um, 1 ml 10 to the negative third liters. So remember those uh, prefix multipliers that's what I was that's what I just used. So 1 liter equals one liter, that's how you can set it up. And then in order for us to get milli, we have to take that value from the chart that corresponds to milli. So one milliliter is the same as times 10 to the negative third. So that's why I wrote 10 to the negative third. It's the same thing. And you end up getting 0 0.350 liter. So we're gonna take that mole divided by the liter and then we will calculate our molarity. So I got 0.0857 molar, but um, remember we're limited by sig figs, and since we are dividing in this case, and this has one sig fig, this has three, then obviously we, we can only have one sig fig for this value. So you can just go ahead and round it. So we only want one sig fig. We look at the one right next to it, that five, five or greater, 
means you round, so it's 0.09 molar sugar in this coffee solution. Now the next part of the problem asks how much sugar in grams is in 10 ml of the drink above. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, erase some of this. So this uh, next question is asking how much sugar in grams is in 10 ml, right? Uh, so let's go ahead and look at the mole map real quick. So we have our molarity, right? We calculated it out. Uh, we need to know how much sugar in grams. So essentially, we are going from here to here. So that means we're going to start off with the volume. We're going to end up with a mass. So this is our known and this is our unknown. So we're going to start with that volume, which is 10 ml. Let's go ahead and convert that volume to um, liters. And I'm, I hope that you are kind of familiar with um, converting these already. But essentially what this is, is 0.01 liter. You move this three times. So I'm showing you kind of some different ways to convert it. You can set it up for dimensional analysis. You can, if you know what milli stands for, that means that you know how to move the decimal place. But if you don't, just set it up the old fashioned way, you'll be fine. Okay, so it's 0.01 liter. So that's what we're starting with, 0.01 liter. And then it's solution. In order for us to get to moles, we need to use this molarity to get there. So again, molarity can be set up as a conversion factor. So we can rewrite this as a unit equation, 0.09 mole in one liter solution. So in one liter solution, we have 0.09 mole of sugar. I'm gonna just write sugar instead of sucrose. So now we have moles. Now we need to get, right, we, we finished that. Now we need to go to mass. So we need to find the molar mass of sucrose. So I'm going to go ahead and Google that and then write it in here. So uh, what you get for the molar mass is 342.3. Uh, I changed this to match. So these moles cancel out and then we have the grams uh, have our last be our last unit, which is what we want. So when we multiply all this out, so I multiply 0 0.01 times 0 0.09 times 342.3, um, you get 0 0.30807. Now, remember sig figs? Uh, we started off with 10 and also that 0 0.09. Now, because we calculated that 0 0.09, like that molarity is calculated, that does count for sig figs. It's not like a defined unit or, you know, how the other prefix multipliers or those other unit equations that we use are. So we are going to, we only want this. So we're going to circle that one and that zero is less than five. So essentially that means we are just going to be 0.3 grams sucrose. That's how much we added to this uh, drink. So in the lab, uh, the way that we um, typically store solutions is we will have very concentrated stock solutions. Now that's useful because from that you can make dilutions of it. And in order to make dilutions, you have to uh, accurately calculate how much of that stock you need for your dilution. Um, and something that's very important to understand whenever you're making dilutions is that all you're doing is you're changing the volume. You're not changing the amount of solute that is within that stock, however much you took of it, into your dilution. All that you're changing is the volume. So imagine that you had a very, very sweet um, lemonade from Chick-fil-A. Like they just made it way too sweet and it was just not good because of that. So you're like, okay, I can just add some water and it'll dilute that sweetness. So all you did was you added more volume. You didn't add more sugar. Obviously that would not make no sense. You didn't add anything else. You just... Add, you just added more volume so to make it more dilute 
So it's the same thing with dilutions. Um, so the concentrations and the volumes are inversely proportional to each other. And this is the equation that we use. And what inversely proportional means is that if you have a certain molarity on uh, your original molarity versus your volume, they are inversely proportional to each other, meaning that if one goes up, the other is going to go down. And you'll see right now when we start calculating these um, these uh, dilutions out. So just to give you a visual of how you would actually make this in the lab, let's say you had a 10 molar stock solution of calcium chloride in your in your inventory, right? And your experiment calls for 0.5 molar calcium chloride, and specifically you need like let's say 2.25 liters of that. So you're like, okay, I'm going to make a little bit extra, so I'm going to make 3 liters of that dilution, right? You're going from 10 molar to 0.5 molar. Um, so you are obviously going from a higher concentration to a lower. Remember, that's always what it, what a dilution is about. You go from higher to lower. So essentially what they did after they calculated this out, they took 0.15 liters of that stock. They measured it in a graduated cylinder. They transferred it to a volumetric flask that is 3 liters. Like the max, the, the volume of it is 3 liters. So they they place that in there and next you take water and you dilute to the volume line so now what you have is that 0.5 molar uh, dilution that you wanted and just to show you how your moles do not change so in your original sample of that uh, that stock solution the 0.15 liters if you multiply it against that 10 mole Using the molarity as a conversion factor, you get 1.5 mole. When you multiply that 0.5 mole uh, against that 3 liter, you get 1.5 mole. So this is showing you that you have the same, whoops, you have the same amount of moles in both here and your finished product. So this was your what you started with, a, a portion of that stock. So in these problems, I can give you two volumes and one molarity. I can give you two molarities, one volume. It can depend. So all you, what you need to be able to do is to differentiate what is being asked for and what you're given. So I have 0 0.850 milliliters of a six molar solution. I dilute it to 1.8 liters what will the new molarity be? So think about what we just talked about, how you would actually do it in the lab. You took a portion, you have 0.85 liters, uh, well, 0.85 milliliters, sorry. So it's a very small amount, actually. And its molarity is 6 point molar, right? And then you diluted that up to 1.8 liters. What would the new molarity be? So you had an original molarity, that six molar solution. You had an original volume, right? Your initial volume or volume number one, whatever you want to call it. And you diluted it to 1.8 liters. What is your new molarity? That's what you're searching for, M2. So that's what you got to get the hang of, being able to read the problem and connect it to the equation. After that, it's easy. So all you're going to do is solve for M2. So I'm going to divide both sides by V2, and that should give me my equation. So M2 equals M1 times V1 divided by V2. So after that, you just plug and chug. So our M1 is 6.0 molar, V1 is 0 0.850 ml. You can keep it all in ml if it's the same thing, but unfortunately one of these is not ml, which is these liters, and this is actually 1,800 ml. And when you calculate this out, you end up getting You'll get 2.83 times 10 to the negative third 
uh, molar as your new concentration of the, your dilution. So I have 6.0 grams of sugar water that contain 4.25 milligrams of sucrose. What is the percent by mass? So percent by mass and volume um, percentage are both concentrations that you will see in the lab sometimes, but more typically you'll see molarity very often. And all you have to do is either divide the mass of the component by the mass of solution or volume of solute versus volume of solution times 100. Pretty simple. So we need to either convert the grams or the milligrams to grams. We need to pick one so that they match. So I'm actually going to take the milligrams and convert them to grams. So remember how we set up units, unit conversion uh, prefixes. Um, milli means times 10 to the negative third. So that's our unit equation. So our one milligram will go at the bottom. And then what we end up getting is 0 0.00425 grams. So we're going to take that divided by our six grams of sugar times 100. And you should end up getting, you should get a very small number. 0.0703 percentage. Um, in terms of sig figs, this one had two. So, oh, I should have wrote that. So we should only have two here. So I'm going to round. So we have these two. And then you look at this one. Eight is greater than five. So it turns to seven one. So 0.071% sucrose in this sugar water. Now, some other concentration units that you will see are actually mixed mass to volume um, units. So, for example, mass to volume percent is where you'll take the mass of the solute and then the volume of the solution. So earlier we were talking about mass over mass, volume over volume. This is mixed, so mass to volume. A typical type of concentration that you'll see in healthcare, so for all the nurses out there, you'll see 0.9% um, mass over volume uh, NACL concentration in the saline that you put on patients. This is actually 0.9 grams of sodium chloride in 100, per 100 ml of uh, water, I'm sure. <laughs> and another example is whenever you take a patient's uh, blood glucose level, for example, my mom, she has type 2 diabetes, so she's always she takes her her concentration every day in the morning and she'll tell me like okay I got like 110 I got 120 which is pretty good for a diabetic and what she's referring to is the milligrams per deciliter so this uh, this is the range for like a normal well yeah a normal a concentration and again this is mixed uh, mass to volume 